Hello, this is Bob LaRusso with the Sold by Bob La team, and we are presenting our first time home buyers class. This is a class where we're going to go step by step on how the home buying process is, making it nice and easy so you understand every step of the way. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you get a lot out of it. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Joe DeBotto with the Sobe Baldo team. Thank you for coming to our uh, first time homebuyers uh, class and hope you have a great day. Hi, my name is Barbara Ventura from the Soul by Baldo team. We are here today with our first time homebuyer class. Thank you for coming. We hope you get a lot of information out of it. Hey, I'm Marco Dardini with the Soul by Baldo team. Welcome to our first time homebuyers class here at Keller Williams Legendary Office. Hi guys, welcome. I'm Baldo, and this is the Soul by Baldo team, and we're excited today to just run down the steps of home, uh, first time home buying. So um, each of you have a notepad, a pen in front of you, you can write down notes inside the, the folder, we'll have the what we're talking about and what you'll see on the slideshow as well. So from the introduction to everything, just in case you wanna remember something, we're gonna, we're gonna be giving you a lot in a very short period of time. And of course, if you guys have questions after we're done please as many questions as you have um, and we'll go from there so congratulations first uh, this is your first step in uh, possibly becoming a homeowner so this is exactly where you want to be this is where you're gonna learn each step and we're gonna go from here so we're gonna start with um, introducing our vendors so Barbara please okay I got it <laughs> So I'm going to start with introducing our, our vendors. First we have Rebecca from Cardinal. Um, this is Rebecca. She's our bank. Uh, one of the best in the business. She's been doing it for quite a while. I know she looks like she's a teenager, but she's been doing it for a very long time. Uh, and she's very, very good at what she does. And she'll be speaking in a little bit. Um, we have uh, Leslie Wells, who's the attorney. She's not here today, but we do have a small video we'll be playing of her. Um, she's from the South. She's the best with first time home buyers. She's so gentle. She holds hands. She's exactly who you want to work with, especially when you're a first time home buyer. You have a million questions. Um, we also have Rob from Premier Home Inspections. He's going to have a few things to say as well. Uh, inspections a huge part of buying your first home. You really want to know what you're getting yourself into. That's the gentleman who's going to help with that. Um, and then we have Rob Fuzzezi from 360 Multimedia. Um, great videographer, great photographer, does a ton of work in and around the area. So if you have any questions on that, I, we have his information as well. All right, so let's start. Introduction. You wake up and you said, today I want to buy a house. I'm ready, right? That's it, you're good. All you gotta do is play a credit card, point at the one you want, swipe, and we're good to go. I wish it was that easy, but it's not, but it's not as hard as we think. So one of my first suggestions would be to find, find an agent. Find an agent that you're comfortable with. It might not be me, that's why we have so many people on, on the team. Uh, my face might bother you, I get it. It bothers a lot of people. Uh, that's why we have so many great people on the team, which is Giuseppe, we have Marco, and we have Barbara. So, my favorite people in the world. They're all going to say something at one point. <laughs> oh, slide. So, first thing I would say is find somebody to work with. Find an agent that you know, that you trust, that has a proven track record. You want to work with somebody who has numbers and knows how to negotiate and knows how to work for you. It's very important to, to, to this is, this is a, a great union. This is somebody you're going to put a lot of faith, time, and trust into. You want to be sure that this is somebody that you want to work with. Um, the second thing is linking up with a mortgage person that knows what they're doing. And this is why Rebecca's here as well. This is, this is the person who knows what they're doing. They're going to run through, they'll give you any uh, program that's out there, anything that's going to benefit you. Two things that are very important to the home buying. Again, the, the realtor that you're working with and the mortgage person that you're working with. First thing you do after you meet the realtor that you want is getting pre-approved. And that is all on Rebecca. A pre-approval is so important nowadays because most houses don't even want to show unless there's a pre-approval. So, and knowing what you have, knowing what you can and can't do. A lot of buyers say, oh yeah, um, I'm good for 500. 
maybe you are. Maybe you're, you're better for more. Maybe you think the number that you can afford is 500, but that number is different than what you're actually looking at, or possibly not. So when you do speak to Rebecca about your mortgage, she'll she'll break it down for you almost to the dollar. She'll tell you your tax bracket. She'll tell you how much you you're comfortable with. Um, that's a big thing too. When you when you finally do know your number, I am a strong believer in do what you're comfortable with, not what you can afford. There's a big difference. So, you know, you're still gonna want to go on vacation. You're still gonna want new shoes. You still want, you know, whatever it may be. You're still gonna want to live your life. So, make sure your number makes sense for you, where you can still live your life. Um, and that's going to be a tax and a, a price point. So that's something that, that's the conversation you have with Rebecca and she'll really break it down for you. Realistic must-haves and wants, right? So, like, I want six bedrooms, jacuzzi in every bedroom, you know, I want, I want an in-ground Olympic pool, I want this, I want that. It's not realistic, you know? You really have to think about what you have. Possibly you have, you know, three kids. You can't buy a two bedroom house, you know? That's a must, you, you must have more than two bedrooms. So you really have to break down your, your wants and your, your needs. And then what happens is we have your price point, we know what you can afford, and then we pick your areas. And I tell you, okay, look, this is what you can get here, this is what you can get here, this is what you can get here, and are you comfortable with that? So, realistic must-haves and, and wants, very important as well. Uh, bank do's and don'ts. Rebecca's gonna get into this, right? So, nobody buy a Ferrari, right? When you're looking for a house. Like, forget the Ferrari. After you close, buy the Ferrari, it'll be great. Um, I typically have one rule, when you're looking for a home, I, I cap my budget at 300. So if you're gonna buy something that's over $300, quick phone call, a text message. Hey Rebecca, I was thinking about buying this $2,000 purse. She's gonna probably say, don't do it. You know, it's not a good idea. Um, you know, I really want the new Tesla that drives itself. Hold off, you know? So, so my thing is after $300, kinda put a cap on it and, and Make the quick text, say, hey, um, is this gonna affect me? Because everything affects you when you're in the process of buying a house. She'll get into more of the do and don'ts uh, when she gets up here. Presentation. Um, so you wanna, you wanna start narrowing down your areas. So when you start looking for a house, it, it's very overwhelming. Like, you're like, well, in Franklin Square, I can get a cape for 650, but if I go to, uh, you know, Suffolk, deep Suffolk, I can get, you know, a colonial for 650 on, on you know, an 80 by 100. You kind of want to narrow down your areas. You want, you want, you want to be able to know where you're comfortable. You know, comfort. If you pick too many areas, it's very overwhelming. So I would say pick no more than two at a time. And for my sake or anybody on the team, uh, please don't let it be, you know, the Hamptons and Franklin Square. You know, just say, kind of keep it close, uh, just to, just to make it make it a little bit better. Um, so narrowing down your areas, huge. Just, it keeps you focused. When you're looking at one area, you really know what's coming out, you're on top of the market, you really know how to lock on something, and it just helps you in the long run. Um, scheduling your time during the week and weekends, and setting up open houses. To set an appointment for a house, um, I, I wish it was as easy as, oh, I wanna see this house on 123, you know, Candy Lane, and I say, okay, let's go. We'll meet me in half hour. We have to make sure that we know your schedule ahead of time. We want to know when you're available. We want to know uh, how your weekends look. And we want to be able to set up your schedule. And we wrap ourselves around your schedule. So we know Wednesdays. You don't work on Wednesdays. Wednesdays, we load you up. We make sure that Wednesdays, you're, you're ready to go. And we have all your appointments set for that day. So we, we kind of like to know your schedule ahead of time so we can always be ready for it. Um, open houses are great. Um, you know, you want to go look in Suffolk County and there's three, four houses you want to see. 
you let us know. We'll set up each one so you don't have to sign any paperwork, you don't have to do anything, you just walk in, you tell them, hey, this is my agent, and we set everything up for you. Um, okay, so now we're going to open houses. We're looking at houses. We finally have a better idea of what we want. You know, we're like, okay, this is our price range, this is our area, this is our wants, this is our needs. We have a better idea. Um, we have one first impression on an offer. The market is definitely different today than it was six months ago. But we always want to give our best foot forward. You know, our presentation, our first presentation, whenever we're offering something, we want to have all our paperwork locked up. We want to make sure that when we present, we present the best that we possibly can. We always want to be ready. So when Rebecca asks you for a couple of pieces of paper, just give it to her. That's it. <laughs> just give it to her. Don't, don't, don't drive her crazy. She's going to need it, and it's going to help you. Because you know what's going to happen? You fall in love with the house when your stuff isn't ready, and by the time we get you ready, that house is gone. Because there's still very low inventory. And believe it or not, when you are ready, it can go very quickly. It can go very quickly. So your first, your first impression is, is a huge thing. We want to make sure that we have all our paperwork in order and everything is set. So when we do pull the trigger, we're ready. I know, it's scary. It's like, oh God, he just made me buy a house. No, no, hold on, everybody calm down. You know, some of us aren't ready to buy a house. Some of us have, have a little bit of a credit problem. That's okay. Nobody has perfect credit. Nobody, nobody goes into this. This is why this class is so important. If there is an issue with your credit, Rebecca can be like, hey look, it's gonna probably take around four months you know, to fix it up. This is what you have to do. Let's get you set up and then we'll go. You know, it, it's very important that, that, you know, these are all steps that we need to know. Um, so that's that first impression paperwork. Uh, finding a match. So we, we, we found the match, you know. What's the next one? Oh wait, uh, finding a match. Um, you found the house, that's it. Right, like it, it's right. It's got the right amount of bedrooms. There's a beautiful little tree that a squirrel waved at you in the front yard. This is it. This is the house, right? You, you got that feeling. Um, what do we do? What's the next steps? Our paperwork's in order. We have a team surrounding us, so we know who our attorney is. We know who our home inspector is. We know who our, our bank is. We know everything. We're ready. We have a team behind us. Our real estate agent, whichever one it may be, is is driving this 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 car, making sure everything is going good. We put in an offer. We have an accepted offer. Amazing. We have an accepted offer. Not all of them get accepted, don't get me wrong. But let's say we have an accepted offer. We found our house. We know which house we're getting. This is where it's very important where home inspection. I'm a real estate agent. You know, Rebecca's the bank. Rob's the photographer. We're all very good at what we do. Rob is the inspector. He's licensed, he knows what he's looking for, he goes into these houses several times a day and he knows exactly what's gonna cost you money. And it's very important. So that small fee that you're paying for a home inspection can save you tens of thousands of dollars in the long run. So Rob, if you have a second, please come and say a few words. So after you guys, oh, I'm Rob Cicero from your home inspection group, sorry. Um, so as Bowler said, so after you get through all that and you get an accepted offer, I come in and I kill your dreams and aspirations. But yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so what, as Bowler said, is our job is to really just uncover any un unforeseen, any issues, um, any major issues that may cost you money in the future, such as a roof, a heating system, uh, possible safety and health conditions, asbestos, mold. Um, so what we're gonna really do is, you know, at most of you as our first time home buyers, you know, also show you some things, where the shuttle valves are for your, you know, you know your, your water system, your, you know, how to serve, you know, what you should do with your heating system, how often it should be serviced. Um, you know, if the roof is at the end of its economic life, just kind of, you know, bring it up to speed. It's not leaking now, but it may, you know, you're gonna need a new roof in about 10 years or so. Um, you know, that's really what our role is to do. Has anybody ever looked at a house yet? 
anybody owned a house yet? So you're, you're all true first time home. But you lived in your own home probably with your parents, right? So you remember your dad's doing things on the weekends, caulking things. So we're going to really just make sure that the home, what the condition of the home is at the time you're looking at it. It's a snapshot of time. And then we're going to just kind of outline to you, hey, listen, your heating system is, you know, old. It's from 1986. It's going to probably need to be updated. But it is performing its function. Um, you know, make sure the roof, of course, is not leaking uh, any possible water concerns. We use thermal imaging, thermal imaging, see for those things. Um, you know, in the ground tanks. You know, certain areas like Levittown, for instance. Levittown is a an area where there was, you know, those houses that had in the ground oil tanks. A lot of people don't know about them. It was converted over to gas. So was the was the oil tank abandoned? So that's where like time and experience comes in. You know, I've been doing this for 23 years, so I know. Okay, in Levittown, all my guys be conscious of possible new ground oil tanks because now once you take possession of that property, now that's your issue. You know, so those are things where just using an experienced inspection firm is going to be something that's paramount. No disrespect to anybody that just got into the field, but there's just certain things you're just going to learn over time from just being out in the field. As Valdo said, you know, we're doing 100 plus inspections a month. We're in houses every single day, two, three houses. You know, so we know each area. We know certain conditions that we're going to be dealing with for, with each area. Um, and that's pretty much what our role is to do. Um, as Baldo said, once you find a house, you know, it's really, really important to, you know, set up a time, you know, with the company, whether it be my company or any other company, do your due diligence, but you want to be present at the inspection. It's important because um, you need certain things. I, it's all documented with photos, but me telling you something and showing you something you see in a photo can be two completely different things. Um, a big thing that a lot of people are doing now also is what's called the final walkthrough. You're going to do a final walkthrough. So after you get, you know, Rebecca gets you to, you know, clear clothes, now you're going to go and do your final walkthrough. So if there were conditions on an inspection, you may want to then have the inspection company come back and do a final walkthrough. Just because they said it was fixed, you know, you're excited. Wow, you know, 45 days since we looked at this house, we're ready to close. Um, you know, I bought that TV right before Super Bowl. It's going to go here. You're not looking at the things. So now you move into the house, and they say they fixed an outlet, and you go to plug something, it doesn't work. Now you close on the house. Good luck. You can go about though, or me, or I'm like, well, they said they fixed it. I don't know. You know, we didn't check. So there's a lot of steps, and you know, we'll make sure that you guys are up to speed at all times on what's going on with that stuff. Anybody have any questions on like anything that they, they may be wondering about how an inspection is handled? No, it was making it as easy. Yeah. Maybe right. later. Yeah, but what I'll do is I'll hand out my card. You guys can call me in any question. So if you're on a property and you have a particular question, of course, you guys can still reach out to me. If you just have a general question, like what should we be looking for, we can always send you over like a checklist, something just to help you guys out during the uh, process. You know, because of course, I don't know what you guys' backgrounds are, but you know, not that you can be jumping up on a roof, but there may be certain things you may be looking for while you're walking through the process. Okay? I'll be out here, right? Yeah. All right, guys. The is very detailed. Um, there's photos for everything. He breaks everything down. He's not scaring you to death, but he's also making sure that he he breaks everything down to where you're understanding it because it's a lot. As a first-time home buyer, I'm I've lived in my house for nine years. If I ask my wife, "Where's the water cutoff?" she'll have no clue. But I need to know that, you know. So this is something that he's going to do as well. He'll be like, "This is your main. This is your this is your water cutoff. This is your main water coming into the house. This is your electrical box." Listen, none of us know this stuff. Like I, I lived in the house with my parents, you know. I, I know I'm, I'm old. I, I had parents a long time. Ago. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I didn't know any of this stuff. So an inspection is so important, especially for a first-time home buyer, because it, you, you, you break it down. You know, it just breaks it down. So our attorney is not here today. Um, so we have a small video we're going to play. Her name is Leslie Wells. She is spectacular when it comes to first-time home buyers. She's very easy to get along with, and she's very patient. Um, first-time home buyers tend to have the most questions, which they should because it's their first time going through it and she's definitely a great person to work with so here's a little video for her, from her hi my name is Leslie Wells and I'm a real estate attorney here in Long Island I love working with first-time home buyers um, they have a lot of questions and I love to be helpful so if you access my website wellslawli.com it has all the means of contact uh, feel free to ask me any questions you might have about the legal side of the home buying process i'm more than happy to help and make myself available 
you can call, email, or text, and I will respond to you as quickly as possible. And my job mainly in the process is to make sure you have a fair contract, make sure you understand the contract because it's a lot, and to follow your lending process and make sure you reach your deadlines, make sure title is clear and acceptable. And then once you're clear to close, you show up at the closing and we go through all the hoops required in order to get you the keys and then you're home. If you ever have questions, like I said, you can reach out to me on my website. I'm sure there is contact information from Team Baldo as well. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. So that is Leslie. That's what I was talking about. Very soft-spoken. Like everybody feels like they would just hug, right? That's basically, and, and that's exactly what you want to work with when you're a first-time home buyer. Um, so let's let's talk a little bit more about the the, the attorney um, choosing the right attorney. Again, you want to make sure you're you're choosing the right attorney. Uh, somebody who's going to look out for you. Somebody who's not just trying to get the deal done. Somebody who's going to explain the process and somebody who's uh, accessible. You know. What I mean, it's a, it's attorneys are very busy, you know. But you, you kind of want if you got a question you want to ask, you, you want you want it answered um, in a timely matter. Um, so I have my partner Marco here. He's gonna run down a few more things on the attorney. I'll let you go. Hello, um, Marco Darduini, If we haven't met already, um, as Baldo was saying, now uh, next step is uh, once you guys have the accepted contract, you uh, you got the inspection done, the attorney sends out the fully executed contract, which means the seller agreed to the terms and the buyer agreed to the terms, and now the um, it's basically in the attorney's hands. They they go back and forth, uh, whatever issues that there may be, if if any, and uh, then it goes to um, title as well going back and forth with um, any liens, any open liens on a property, any other issues that uh, may have a lot of behind the scenes stuff. There may be some, um, like um, an open uh, certificate of occupancy for a deck that was built without a permit, like little things like that that have to be worked out that aren't major. Normally little things like that, they usually work it out. And um, that's that. So now you have the flex through contract. And once you have the contract, you do the down payment. First part of the down payment, you usually do at the uh, contract and then the final at closing, whatever it may be, if you put down 10%, 5% on contract and then another 5% at the closing. And um, I mentioned the title and the survey and that's basically it. They go back and forth. If there are any issues, did I miss anything? No. No? That's pretty much it. I'm a little nervous if you couldn't tell, <laughs> but um, you guys are awesome and thank you for coming. And after that is is the closing, correct? Okay, What's the next screen? Before that. Oh, yeah, Rebecca didn't speak. Rebecca. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So I'll just say a few more things on the attorney, that what you want to do. It, it, it's, it's, it's just a real quick, quick, where you, we find the house, we have an accepted offer. Their attorney, the seller's attorney, sends out contracts. Our attorney reviews them, protects us, makes sure that we're good. We sign contracts, like Marco said, we're gonna send in, we're gonna give them some money. That's always a painful little situation there. Uh, it's a real a real hard check to sign, but it's a great thing because you're, you're one step closer to home ownership. Once we sign, the seller signs, that means we're fully executed. Once we're fully executed, then all the fun stuff happens. That's where Rebecca comes in 100 miles an hour and does everything that she, all the magic she does to make it happen. Um, so please, Rebecca, if, you, okay. if you can, thank you. Listen, I'll try to make it short, but I'll, it's a lot to cram in, yeah, but lot. I'll squeeze it in. Well, first of all, thank you guys for showing up. I know that's kind of an exciting step. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Rebecca. I'm with Cardinal Financial. Um, we're one of the larger banks um, out here in New York, but we're actually in 50 states, and I'm licensed in 15, and I've been doing this over 22 years. I specifically work with first-time home buyers or anybody who has mortgage needs. Truthfully, I do this because I love going through the journey with you guys. I always tell everyone working with me isn't um, a conversation you're having of 
where I'm standing there with an approved or denied. It's like I'm showing you the roadmap on how we need to do this. So if there are things we need to work on, I'm giving you all the tools and I'm preparing you. I'm whipping you into shape. I don't show any of your stuff to underwriting. Um, I'm that person you come to to figure out how do we do it. And that's the role that I play. So if there are things that need to be addressed, we work together. I'll try to just hone in on a few points and I won't get too in depth, but I did, we did include this little like, um, steps for home ownership. And maybe it will tie in some of the things that Baldo and the team have discussed already, right? So they mentioned getting pre-approved, right? Um, many of you have heard of pre-qualifications and pre-approvals. There's a difference. Truthfully, to just summary it down, sometimes when you speak with a bank, they might just ask you a few questions. That's likely what a pre-qual is. A pre-approval is when we really look at the full picture. We look at the credit, we look at your income, we look at your assets, right? We would sit down, we would, or have a phone call, and I would go through everything pertaining to your job, how long have you lived there, and all those type of things. And just a few pointers on the pre-approval process. Again, if you're not ready, it's okay, but I'm gonna point you in the right direction as far as your credit. Us at Cardinal, we do have programs where the down, where they would allow you to borrow as low as 500 FICO score. Does that everyone's goal? No, but there are some people who are in circumstance and maybe that product might gear towards them, okay? So having flexibility and tons of options and a lender who knows how to structure a deal is extremely important, right? But as a first time home buyer, I'll say this, there's products out there such as FHA, conventional. We included some like, things in here pertaining to products. Um, and we probably could give you some more, but you'll see there's things pertaining to conventional FHA. As a first time home buyer, you do not have to put 20% down, all right? Um, you can put as little as three to 3.5%. Many of you have heard of FHA, and we probably don't have the product in there, but we'll make sure we get those in your hands. Um, and there's programs out there that will gear towards helping you with down payment if you don't have it all. If your income requirements meet it, that's part of our pre-qual and pre-approval conversation. I determine which are the best products for you, and then I issue you the pre-approval letter according to your circumstance and what fits you. If we're not able to issue that pre-approval at the end of the call, I've already given you the game plan, and we work together. We're homies to the end. <laughs> like My goal is to help you get there. By the end of it, we're, I'm coming to the cookout. <laughs> so that's that. I prepare the file prior to it going to underwriting. So after you go out with Baldo and his team and you guys find everything and the attorneys go back and forth, we jump into what they call a fully executed contract. That means you've already been pre-approved, you went out shopping, you had the house inspected, your attorney worked with you, now it's showtime, right? And at that point, we've already did our scrubbing. It's When you work with Cardinal, we actually prove your file in advance, so you already know you're getting the mortgage. It takes away some of the nervousness of the transaction Action, kind of allow you to be a little bit more excited about the process and so on. Obviously there's um, things that along this process as your contract's been signed, we're going to want you to not do, right? Such as what he mentioned, the do and the don'ts at one point. One, you're not going to be having your credit run. You're going to protect that at all costs. You're going to maintain job stability. If you're considering changing jobs, let's have a conversation. I literally had a conversation with a buyer yesterday who was going, I'm switching from salary to per diem. Well, we had to have that conversation. We determined if that would affect their pre-approval. So those type of things we're discussing along the way. If you have to make a purchase because your car broke down, you can't get to work, let's talk about it. Let's get on the phone. Let's make sure it's not affecting you. But from that point after contracts are signed, you're going through underwriting, you're getting your house appraised. There's a difference between an inspection and an appraisal. That's um, where the bank makes sure what you're buying is truly worth what it is. Um, the bank is reviewing all the documentation you have provided through. The title search is sent from your attorney. Um, your attorney's working with the seller to make sure that's clear. You're not getting any of the stuff that the seller had on, the, on them onto your new house. You're getting nice, clean title, and the bank's making sure of those things. 
And um, after we go through all these things and all the documentation has been sorted out, your file gets clear to close and we set up a, a closing date and we're, we all go to the table and we sign those documents and, and it's yours <laughs> from there. It's really, believe it or not, simple and it's really, if we do everything well from the pre-approval process, it's really as smooth sailing as what I mentioned. It's really more so nerves at that point, <laughs> but that's okay. Once you know you are paired with the right person who knows how to put you in the right product and structure, it's really um, not as daunting as a process as you think. Um, again, um, I won't bore you with the, the, the details of it, um, but at the end of the day, I really want to see everyone become homeowners. Uh, look at us as your, like, your partners and somebody who to lean on to help you get to the finish line. I'm, I know I didn't get too in-depth in products, but I gladly answer any questions and things I maybe did not touch. Does anybody have any questions pertaining to anything related on the mortgage aspect? Don't be shy. <laughs> It's okay. You know what I say to people? By the time you get off the phone with me, most people are like, wow, you touched base on everything. I don't have any questions. No, don't worry. You're going to have questions along the way. And just like the inspector and them and your attorney, I literally give out my cell phone number. I tell my clients, text me. I answer your questions immediately. That's another thing. You want to make sure you're dealing with somebody who's responsive. I work weekends. I work nights. I really try to work so you can catch the fish and beat the competition and have the strongest, you know, possibility of getting into a home. So the questions may come later on down the way and that's that. But anyhow, thank you guys for coming and, and starting the first step to home ownership. Did you did I touch base on everything you yeah, want me to? Absolutely. I know I zoomed through but hopefully it was not there's plenty in there for you guys to dig into as well. So just just a few things to cap uh, to recap. She said three to three and a half percent which is huge. Most people think it's 20%. So you're saving and you're saving and you're saving. And, and then there's things like good debt and bad debt. So this is very important. If you have a student loan or you have something, don't pay it off. Oh, no. Don't do that. Don't do any of that because there's such a thing as good debt. And, and Rebecca will explain it to you. So sometimes somebody's like, oh, I gotta pay off this, this, this student loan. I, 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 you're paying $200,000 a month, the student loan is $120,000. The bank would much rather you be paying $200,000 a month than see a bank account deplete $100,000. So just, it's very important that before you make any financial decisions over $300, that's my rule. That's, that's so so I, I don't spend over 100 without asking my wife, right? So that's, that's, that's the way I live my life. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna spend, yeah, let, me, let me make the call. Same thing, even now, before you're, th even if you're not ready today, that phone call to Rebecca should happen because she'll explain things like that. Like, don't pay off certain debt. Don't, don't, don't do these things because you'll hurt yourself. Even if they're collections or charge-offs, don't. Exactly. So before you think about, because some people don't understand the situation that they're in, that isn't always a bad thing. It's really not. So that's why it's so important to surround yourself with, with a professional who knows exactly what they're doing. Um, so yeah, three and a half percent, three percent. It's amazing. That makes it, that makes it attainable. So, you know, the goal for having, uh, being a homeowner in 2023 could be realistic, you know, it could happen. As long as you set yourself up with the right people, the right team, and the right, everyone who's on your side, that's what matters. And clear to close, whenever I hear those three words, they're the most beautiful words in real estate. That means you're about to be a homeowner. Clear to close. Your life is about to change. You're about to start building equity in your life. You're, you're, you're setting a foundation for not only you, but for future generations when you're when you're becoming a homeowner. A, a landlord and a homeowner is, is one of the most spectacular things I believe you can be. Um, 
So now we're at we're at a spectacular park. I'm going to introduce. Oh, I just want to say something. Oh please. All right. This is Barbara so, um, Ventura. I don't speak much. I, I don't have much to say, but I'm, I'm the brains behind the uh, party. They're they're the beauties. <laughs> Come on. So. She's totally lying about this one. I want to introduce my team because um, where we all started, I started real estate in 06, but I joined Keller Williams in 2020, and about two years ago now, about a year and a half, two years, we, us four, joined forces to, to form the Soul by Baldo team. And I think when I speak, I speak on behalf of them, we are proud to be behind his name. Baldo had a vision, and I think we've done a lot in the past two years. To, for the community and for our sellers and buyers. So um, using any of us, just know we'll have the patience and walk every step of the way with you guys to get you to own, uh, you know, your goal to own a home, because that's what we want for you. So good luck, and Alyssa, if you have any questions. All right. I also want to introduce another team member. I call him Joe. Uh, sometimes Giuseppe, it depends on whatever he's feeling that day, but please come on. I'd like for you to... Thanks, Bob. Well, uh, congratulations, you're now a homeowner. Yeah, we're, we're done, right? We're not, we're not gonna hang out anymore, we're not gonna go looking for houses again. That's absolutely incorrect. Because after this point, there's gonna be a lot of resources you're gonna need that we're need, we're, I'm gonna be able, or we're gonna be able to help provide for you. Whether it be who is your electric company, who's your water company, who is your sanitation, what do we do with this, what's going on with the town that you're in. So we're the resource for you. So we're with you for life. Because no matter what you need and what you go on, we're gonna assist you with. So every type of contact and resource that we have, we're going to be providing for you. So no matter what you do, where you go, or how you get into your town, or what you're doing for your home, whether it be, hey, I need something to do with my, my roof. Who do I have? We have roofers. Oh, I may need to, uh, a painter. We have painters. Oh, I may need someone that's going to be doing flooring. We have flooring guys. So we pretty much have all those steps. This way you're not sitting there going on to Angie's list, sending out a report, and having 55 million people call you up, hey, did you hear about this? Did you hear about this? Did you? No. We'll get you to the right people that know what they do, they're lucrative in what they do, and they're honest in what they do. So at the end of the day, it's your, it's your comfort zone that we care about. So no matter which way it goes, that's the way we're going to help you out. Um, you know, and besides that, you know, it's, it's always good to understand where your house is and where it's going to. Check your neighborhoods, right? You always want to check your neighborhoods, as we said earlier. But this is the part where now you own the home, it's yours, the keys are given to you. Whether you're going to go that same day or the day after, it's not yours. And that's it. Congratulations. And that's it. I'm going to bring it back, bring it back to the boss. He hates that work. It's not far from. <laughs> so this is... This is this is it. This, these are the steps. I know we ran through a lot, and, and we probably like, like here, 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 here. Take this, take this, take this. Um, but this was just to kind of show you what the steps are. Everything we said is so attainable. Um, I have I have stories that in the last few years, two years ago, I family friend. Um, known them for 40 years, you know, my whole life, 40 plus years. Uh, they lived in an apartment their whole life. They lived in a two bedroom apartment in Howard Beach. That's where they lived, two bedroom apartment in Howard Beach. And I had a conversation with them a little over two years ago. And the conversation was, what are you guys doing? Why don't you buy? And they're like, no, we can't. I said, why can't you? So I said, let's have the conversation. We found out their salary, we found out their uh, debt to income ratio, we found everything out. They ended up buying a house. So from a two bedroom apartment that they were living in for over 30 years, they moved to, to, to where'd they move? To uh, Selden? Selden, yes. Selden, an acre of land, a four bedroom cave. And they're paying the same amount they were paying for that rental in Howard Beach. And I have a picture of them, of husband and wife standing in front of this house, in front of a huge property. And to me, that was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. Because what they were going to do, they were going to continue renting and paying someone else's mortgage. But instead, now their kids and their grandkids are going to have this acre of land in Selden with a four-bedroom house. 
it's doable. It's definitely attainable. We just have to figure out the best way to get there. So uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, and it, I hope I, I didn't bore you too much. Uh, and I hope you got some good information out of everything. But you know, congratulations on your first step. Soon you guys, I can see it. I can smell it. You guys are all first time home buyers. Soon. Any questions? I do actually, I finally remember the two questions I had. So the first one is, um, what is the difference between an FHA and a conventional loan? So an FHA and a conventional loan, uh, Rebecca, don't test me, all right? But, yeah. So that. Um, no, that's fine. So FHA is a government-backed um, loan. It's geared towards achieving home ownership, revised home ownership. It's for So a PMI, a, a, an FHA, a PMI, you know, it, it's not an end all. People see the PMI and they're like, oh man, I have to pay X amount more a month for this insurance. Use it as a tool, you know? Rates go up and down constantly, there's right. trends. So if, if in seven years, six years, seven years, you now own the home, you know this is the home you wanna be in. You wanna you, you refinance. You can always bring that PMI down. Use it as a tool to get started in being a homeowner. Being a homeowner, is, it, it, that's, that's the goal. Of course, I go back to one of the first things I said when we started. You have to be comfortable, not what you can afford. So that all falls in the same circle of things that we were talking about. You want to be sure that you're comfortable. Don't max yourself out. You, you, everything else is a challenge that can be taken on. You know, a PMI, great. Three years, rates go down. You're like, you know what? Let's 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 wipe out that PMI. Let's let's refine. You call Rebecca again, and she does refinances. That's the great part about it. She does everything. You can refinance at almost any time. Then. So typically, it's it's you you want some type of equity in the property. Um, so, but you can refinance, uh, but you you typically don't want to refinance unless you have some equity. And the housing market, it, you know. I think my father bought a, a six family for 45,000, you know, years ago. I told him I'd give him 50 cash, he said no. So, you know, typically what happens to house prices? They go up, 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 always. So the more equity you have in your house, the more you're paying off. So these are two things that are happening simultaneously. The price of the house typically goes up and as you're paying the house down, and that's where your equity comes in, and that's when typically you find it. Yeah. Used to be six months is changing soon. Yeah. So there are people who brought six months ago every five, believe it or not, and had equity. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's crazy. And now it's, yeah. they're changing that island to talk, which is not a big deal. Most hmm. people were doing that anyway. Okay. You guys have any other questions? I it's a lot. Go ahead. No, no, please. Absolutely. Yeah. So my only other question that I can think of right now is as a first time homebuyer, what is the difference if my first? 
So, first time, it, so if you're using it as a residential, um, you can grieve your taxes, you can use STAR program, so th there's a little bit more tax benefits when you're using it as a, a primary home uh, instead of a secondary home. Uh, secondary home, you, you, I think really the, the answer to that is you have less tax benefits. But if you're renting out the property, you have to make sure, and, and we do a lot of investment properties as well. Um, so Barbara's like the queen of investment properties, there's no question about it. But we, we run the numbers, we see if it makes sense, we see what your insurance is, we see what, what the maintenance on the property is, we see all of the, the numbers, and then, hey, look, you're, you're, you're in the green X amount every month, you know? Um, and, and that's where it makes sense, you know? So, but, but typically the difference between a primary home and an investment property is, is your tax benefits. Awesome, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? <laughs> you ready? That's it? I have a question. Yeah. Go. Uh, so let's say we bought a home, right? Yes. And now, last minute, the person backs out, doesn't want to sell. What happens? Like, how does that work? So, this is why contracts are so important. Um, Typically, that uh, that doesn't really happen too often. Um, I, I don't see it at all. When somebody's selling and they agree to a price, they're selling, they agree to a price. Um, if it's the other way, um, let's say you're saying somebody doesn't want to sell anymore, but you're so in contract. So let's say, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm a homeowner, right? Mm -hmm. Now, something happens last minute, I don't want to sell anymore, that's it. That's, like, literally the last, the, the week before, I don't want to leave, that's it, and then, how does that, how do they go about that? So typically, you're, you're in contract, they're in contract, the seller's in contract, the attorney's gonna hold them to contract. Um, they can delay it, there can be penalties, there can be fines, but at the end of the day, this contract, unless you decide to break it, they, they have to sell so at one point. That's it, right? Yeah, but they, they, it could be inconvenient for you too, because they could hold it out for, yeah. for a long time. Just and vice versa too, you know, uh, let's say I, I've seen buyers say, Hey, uh, I I want I want out. I don't want it, you know. So and the only way out of a contract. So that's why being in a contract is so important as well. The only way out of a contract is if for some reason you can't get the mortgage. So you know it, that's that's usually the only the only bail back on on getting out of a, of a contract for, as a buyer. Mm -hmm. So so this is something you really want to be sure of. This is a huge uh, you know a huge decision in life and you know most of the time it's more than one person making this decision but you, you really want to be whoever's making this decision you want to you want to be an open conversation you want to be sure that this is what's happening um, and you, you want to be sure of the area that you want to go to you want to be sure of the taxes you want to be sure of your price point there's a lot of things to be sure of and that's what everyone in this room is here for to help with you being sure, being very comfortable, and making this as easy of a, as a process as possible. And I, to tack on to that, the best thing regarding that is having a, an open conversation with both your realtor and your mortgage person. So this way they know everything that's going to happen about you. Because this is a big change for your life. So if you're holding something back and something just pops out of nowhere, where it does happen, You'd rather be ahead of the game than behind the eight ball and not know what's happening. Absolutely. Because that could really falter you down. It could also cause you to lose money if you're the buyer on that deposit that you're never going to get back. So all that information that you have, ask it. Yeah. Always. Nothing is wrong with asking questions or giving the information because the more that we know, the better it is, for, and your lawyer as well, the better it is for us to gauge and your guidance to what your next steps are. Because if we, you hold anything back and it's found out later on, things come out. So you just want to be as open as you can with what you have going on, and this way it makes it easier for us to get you a product, a solution, and a home that's right for you, and not that you're stuck behind, stuck with something you're not, you're not happy with. Yeah. And if you really don't like the house, call me, I'll sell it for you. you know? <laughs> that one's easy. You know? Listen, two people don't lie to your doctor or your lawyer. Yeah. Or your loan officer. Or your loan officer. Don't lie to your loan That's it. Any more questions? If you guys don't want to talk and be on, and you know you have all our cards there, please feel free to reach out. And any questions you guys have, we'd love to answer. And uh, 
congratulations on your first step. We're, uh, I, I, I see keys in your future. So, <laughs> All right, guys. thank you guys. Thank you so much.